we're going to start about like five more minutes, give people time to trickle in at this point, and uh, we'll be right back, get this started. Thank you.
Good, good evening. My name is Mike Griffin. I'm from New York State DOT. How's everyone doing tonight? Well, the people in the back, in the stand in the back, find a nice comfortable seat. Beautiful auditorium, nice and cool in here. So again, Mike Griffin from the DOT, uh, Matt Aldrich, Regional Design Engineer. He's uh, right in the aisle way here. He's uh, also representing the department tonight. Um, I'm the project manager for the Route 36 corridor project, which is a, a big project for the community. And again, tonight, we're here to talk about uh, what we're looking at, what our ideas are. We're not coming with any decisions. But just before we come in, uh, just a couple ground rules of this room. If there's a fire alarm, fire exits are here and here in the back. Again, exit the building safely so that uh, um, you're not injured in a fire. We have bathrooms are out in the, the back, uh, exit the auditorium to the left, and they're also in the back of the uh, cafeteria to the right. Um, smoking, tobacco products are not allowed on school property, so no vaping, smoking, cigarette, um, uh, chewing tobacco, things like that on school property. Um, and again, uh, silence your cell phones, please. Uh, if you're ringers, again, so you're not interrupting other people and uh, disrupting tonight's presentation. Um, tonight's format is, is a very, um, it's, it's semi-formal in the fact that we have a formal presentation for you to see, but again, it's a, it really is a listening uh, event for us at the department to find out that uh, what we think we want to uh, improve in the community is the same as what the community wants. So again, that's kind of what we're here is we'll talk about what we think we want to do and make sure that's what you think we should do. So that's really the, the focus of tonight's presentation is to, to listen to, make sure we're fixing the right um, issues in the community. So with that, let me start the presentation. It's about a 17-minute presentation. It uh, gives you the big background of the project. And so after that, we'll open up the questions and uh, go from there. Additional signal installations and new turn lanes. 
and these changes introduced an increase in non-vehicular traffic. The Route 36 corridor sees about 13,000 vehicles each day across the 10 intersections. In order to identify opportunities for improvement, we study traffic volumes at each of these intersections. The busiest of these intersections is where Route 36 meets with Bethesda Drive, as well as where Walmart and Wegmans are located. For context, during the afternoon commute, there are roughly equal amounts of motorists entering the plaza as there are continuing north along Route 36. This is a key improvement opportunity along the corridor and helps guide DOT engineers when considering turning lanes, signals, and other enhancements. The Route 36 corridor is comprised of three different characteristic types. Within the city, Route 36 has an urban feel with closed drainage, paved medians, and buildings near the roadway. Vehicular traffic operates at lower speeds. Pedestrians are more common along this stretch of the corridor. The north end of the project is a rural field with high-speed, wide-open roadways, wide grass medians, and access to the interstate. And in the middle of these two is what we are calling the suburban or transition area. This is where the high-speed rural roadway is transitioned to the low-speed urban one. There are some pedestrians and bicyclists. The speed limit is reduced and major intersections are in place. The urban section for this project is easily defined as Cass and Elm Street to Adsit Street. The existing corridor is four lanes with raised medians, turning lanes, and signalized intersections. Pedestrian access is limited. As you can see on the graphic, with the north end being at the right-hand side of the photo, this section passes by the intermediate and high school. It includes east-west crossing of the arterial at defined locations like Canacadine Creek, all five intersections are controlled by a traffic signal. This view in front of Cornell High School shows a grass median adjacent to the roadway. Note that there is no pedestrian access in this section. All pedestrians are expected to use the city street system, which has limited access points. The rural section for this project is also easily identifiable from Big Creek Road to Arkport. The existing corridor is four lanes with wide shoulders, no curbing, wide grass medians, and a wide grass corridor. Most intersections are signalized. The I-86 interchange is within this section. The interchange was designed as a cloverleaf design, allowing free flow movement from the interstate to the city. In this graphic, you can see the intersections of Big Creek, Route 21, and Webb's Crossing. Webb's Crossing has a higher than anticipated accident history, including at least one fatal accident. This photo is taken just north of Big Creek Road, traveling northbound along Route 36. At first glance, you could imagine this photo having been taken just up the road on I-86. It has a wide median, paved shoulders, and a high-speed field. There are currently no means of traffic calming to keep speeds down through this section. This photo shows Webb's Crossing Road, which utilizes an atypical intersection design. The wide median requires offsetting left turn lanes and a double signal system to cross Route 36. Since original construction, we have seen increased commercial development in this area. These new businesses attract a higher volume of traffic than what the roadway was originally designed for. The next two slides show the transition of the two northbound lanes with a posted speed of 55 miles per hour, reducing to a single lane with a posted speed of 40 miles per hour. The suburban transition area along Route 36 is of particular interest to New York State DOT engineers for the challenges and opportunities it offers. The transitional area is from Adsit Street to Big Creek Road. It includes retail development on both sides of the corridor. Heavy left turns to and from the plaza and Bethesda Drive and Route 36. The northern plaza driveway at the Wegmans and Duncan end is a partial use intersection. We prohibit northbound left turns into this plaza entrance. One of our key focus areas in this stretch involves motorist speed. With speed changes transitioned from 30 to 45 miles per hour and then 45 to 55 miles per hour and vice versa, we are trying to weigh the interests of those looking to speed up as they leave the city and those looking to slow down as they enter the city. All the while, this stretch of the corridor receives some of the greatest traffic volumes. 
This stretch of Route 36 also sees many pedestrians walking between the city and the plaza, many of whom are either employees at one of the plaza's businesses or a patron of that plaza's businesses. This area is unlit and does not have any dedicated pedestrian accommodations, but there is a clear need for them, as seen by the well-worn path along Route 36. The next three slides show the transition for traffic heading northbound on Route 36. This first photo is at Adzit Street looking northbound. You see a narrow paved corridor with landscape areas adjacent to the roadway. This photo is taken approximately a quarter mile further north at the existing bridge crossing the Canisteo River. At this point, the corridor opens and gives the impression that cars can accelerate to a higher speed. But what our studies have shown is that this location is where cars begin strategizing what lane they want to be in when they get to Bethesda Drive. If they are in the left lane, do they want to position themselves to either go straight, or do they want to use the right half of the left turn lane, or left half of the left turn lane? Meanwhile, people exiting the city in the right lane are also trying to move left to access the plaza. Remember from earlier that approximately 50% of the afternoon traffic used the left turn lanes to access the plaza. At this point, along Route 36, motorists had four choices when leaving the city. Continue straight, turn left into Walmart, turn left into Wegmans, or further ahead, we add a northbound right turn lane to access North Cornell. One question you may be wondering is, why even study the corridor? The answer to that is because our roadways can always be enhanced in some capacity. We are always asking, is this serving the community in a way that best meets our needs? Given the age of this corridor, how the community has evolved since its installation, and the interests of pedestrians and bicyclists, we are seeking to enhance a road and bridge system that will serve the community, improve safety on the corridor, better support the needs of the businesses in our community who need to get goods in and out of the city of Cornell, improve pedestrian and bicyclist movement along the corridor. Speed is a top concern. Currently, drivers regularly speed along the entire corridor, 40 miles per hour in the city, 55 miles per hour in the plaza, and 65 miles per hour north of Big Creek Road is not uncommon. And, as mentioned, we are seeing a large amount of pedestrian traffic along Route 36, where there are no real pedestrian accommodations, creating an unsafe situation for both motorists and these pedestrians. In that vein, not only can pedestrian accommodations to the plaza be improved, but multimodal accommodations throughout this entire corridor can be improved. For instance, is there anything that can be done about crossing the arterial at Cass and Elm Street? Motorists there often do not even see the pedestrians. Other intersections that can show safety concerns are at Webb's Crossing, Bethesda Drive, and Main Street. Interests of the community have changed, and this is an opportunity to discuss enhancing Cornell's bike ability and walkability. Reduce crashes. The Department of Transportation routinely hears these three locations called out. Webb's Crossing has a history of high-speed crashes. Reports show a concerning pattern of motorists running red lights as well as high-speed right-angle accidents. Bethesda Drive has a higher number of crashes than expected. These are a mixture of red light running, right-of-way assumption, meaning a driver incorrectly thinks they have the right of way to turn, and <coughs> side swipes from dual left turns. Cass and Elm Street have a high number of near misses. Cars turning right off Elm Street do not see a pedestrian in the crosswalk and must stop quickly. On the next few slides, we will outline various traffic control measures that could address the identified concerns and enhance the corridor. Again, these are simply tools we have available in our toolbox to enhance the corridor. Nothing has been decided. These three points boil down to one thing, safety. By addressing these issues, we will ensure that our entire community is safer for all residents, motorists, and pedestrians. On the next few slides, we will outline various traffic control measures that could address the identified concerns and enhance the corridor. Again, these are simple tools we have available in our toolbox to enhance the corridor. Nothing has been decided, and nothing will be decided without your input. Full access at the Northern Plaza driveway. Currently, there is no northbound access to the plaza at the Northern driveway. We believe this could alleviate some of the traffic that motorists experience at the Vesta Drive, 
Based on our studies, we believe this would divert about 35% of the traffic that currently turns left at Bethesda Drive to the next northern signal. Additionally, this would allow motorists to more conveniently access businesses at the plaza's northern end. Roundabouts. In our research, we considered the utility of roundabouts throughout the corridor. The use of a roundabout would eliminate the need for a traffic signal and construct a safer intersection. Roundabouts significantly reduce the severity of crashes and high-speed right-angle incidents. The installation of roundabouts would not be an all-or-none decision. If utilized, some intersections within the corridor would <coughs> operate better with roundabouts versus signals, while others would retain signals and left turn lanes. Extension of the two-lane section. We also considered extending the two-lane section from Arcport further south along the corridor. We anticipate further studying this concept, but in theory, this design could be extended within the previously identified rural section, north of Big Creek Road. Reducing the roadway width will allow the project to save on both the short-term construction costs and long-term maintenance costs. It also opens up the opportunity to potentially add a separated trail to improve recreational and multimodal accommodations. We do not believe extending the two-lane section into the urban section would offer much benefit to the community. Enhanced multimodal accommodations. As mentioned, the construction of a multi-use trail could open a multi-mile walking and bicycling trail. We are already seeing pedestrian traffic along the corridor. This would provide pedestrians and bicyclists with the safety necessary to commute along Route 36. With the adjacent Finger Lakes Trail and the Shawmut Trail, this could also expand recreational opportunities and improve the visual appearance of the corridor as you enter for now. The project has the potential to install parallel sidewalk systems along the corridor, seen on the slide here. This would reduce the number of roadway crossings and allow the north-south travel corridors off the circuitous city street network and improve mobility. The intersection of Cass and Broadway has a challenging signal and pedestrian operation. There currently is no ability for motorists to access Broadway from Route 36. In addition to making this intersection better for pedestrians, opening Broadway and Route 36 could potentially improve delivery and truck access to the manufacturing area of the city. As mentioned, speed throughout the corridor is a concern as motorists very frequently exceed the posted speed. With the increased volume of bicyclists and pedestrians along the corridor, speed reductions at this time are under consideration. Our proposal is to extend the 30 mile per hour zone toward Bethesda Drive and extend the 40 mile per hour zone toward Webb's Crossing. Following this presentation, with your input as a member of our community, we will work to finalize our objective. What ideas do you have that you feel may improve this corridor for our community? What can we do to make Route 36 safer for everyone? Please let us know. Again, the dialogue does not end here. NYSDOT will continue to study the corridor, solicit feedback, and build on the conversation we have had with stakeholders, business leaders, members of our community, because that is how we <coughs> implement a project that works for everyone. Let's recap. As stated, nothing has been decided, and it is imperative to solicit input from the community which is why we are here today. Everything discussed in this presentation is conceptual. That being said, there are known safety concerns along the corridor that deserve our attention to enhance the community. Additionally, we will not be utilizing the closed door methods used by prior generations of DOT engineers. We fully believe that achieving the best solution engages the community early and often throughout the entire process. We will continue to work with all of you as we progress with this corridor enhancement. We also want to be mindful that we do not view this as a city project or a town project or a village project. This is a project for our entire community. People and businesses near the corridor, as well as people and businesses miles from the corridor, should be involved with getting the right project. Thank you for taking part in this presentation. Your time, consideration, and insight into our community is greatly appreciated as this project progresses. So that's, the, uh, that, that's our formal presentation. And just to uh, summarize a couple things that uh, we said in the presentation, just to repeat again, 
Um, looking at changes possibly at, at um, Ellen Broadway. We're looking at uh, sidewalks along the Route 36 corridor within the city. Uh, we're looking at uh, improving bike and ped access up to the plaza and, and throughout the entire corridor. We're looking at opening up the Wegmans driveway to improve the safety at Bethesda Drive. Um, improving safety at uh, Bethesda Drive and Webb's Crossing. And we're considering uh, lane reductions coming out of Arcport as part of the project. Again, I keep using the word considering because none of these are decisions that are finalized. In addition to using uh, roundabouts as a safety measure at some of the, the some of the intersections, but obviously we're not going to put 14 roundabouts uh, along the corridor. So again, the rumor of that is, is absolutely false. But again, are we putting zero? That is not determined yet either. So again, it's somewhere between zero and 14. Um, as we go through the engineering, we'll, we'll look at that and, uh, and again, come back with, with good, good opinions of why we want to do what we want to do. But again, the first thing we want to make sure is, do we even need to do roundabouts? Do it, does the public think that everything's fine out here? And so that's kind of why we're here tonight is to um, reach out to you and find out that uh, are we missing something major along the corridor? You guys have lived here for the majority of your lives, I'm sure most of you, and uh, be offered good feedback for us. So with that, Joe Leathersuch is gonna walk around with the microphone. Um, if you have a question, raise your hand. Um, he will, uh, he'll, he'll say the question, I'll repeat it for the entire audience, and then, uh, um, reply with an answer. So that's kind of the format we're going to use, and uh, we'll, we'll start with that. Uh, one, one more quick, I'm sorry, one more quick thing. If someone says something you don't agree with, that's people's opinion. Be mad at me because I've asked them to give it. Don't be mad at each other. So again, this is about the audience's interaction with me, so please, if you don't like something someone else says, don't turn and say, you're silly, you're wrong, or I agree, or I disagree. Just let people express their opinions so we can hear it, because the important part is we want to make sure we hear everyone's opinion. So, thank you, Joe. My name is Angel Scotty. Uh, the question is concerned about roundabouts and the use of the transit car deliveries in the city. And again, uh, we're reaching out to Alston. We have a meeting set up with them shortly. And the important part for the project team is to understand where Alston gets their deliveries from, where their deliveries leave to go to, where they deliver within the city. Because again, if there's something that we can do to help get some of the Alston trucks off of the city street by just being forward thinking, that's what we want to do. So again, roundabouts, if we put roundabouts in on the transit routes, Obviously, we'll be looking at uh, how long the transit vehicles are, how much uh, vertical clearance is underneath them to make sure that we're not going to put them out of business because that's not what we want as, uh, for anyone. So that, no one benefits from that. So that's obviously something we're very sensitive to. Thank you. That, that, the question is, are we really going to reduce lanes to two lanes and add roundabouts? And yes, we are studying the, both of those possibilities as part of the project. But the important part, though, is in the presentation is, within the city limits, we would not be reducing any lanes. So I just want to make sure that's clear. We're not going to be building a two-lane road all the way to Canastillo, like I've read on Facebook. So. Hmm? My name is Frank. Everybody knows that roundabouts are bigger than an intersection of normal. Do you perceive any private lane being taken for the intersection at 66 and 36? 
We, uh, we, we believe we can design the entire roundabout within the existing highway right away. Um, as far as the construction practices of that, we may need minor areas for just constructability purposes, but from a permanent position, we do not believe we need to acquire any right away at that intersection. Um, there may be along the corridor, if the right of way is closed and we're trying to squeeze the sidewalk in, um, we may need a strip acquisition two or three feet wide just to, to build the sidewalk there or build a little retaining wall to minimize the uh, property impacts. But again, there is no plans to acquire any major buildings, anything like that, uh, residential houses, anything like that. Uh, I just want to add, folks, Casey, do you want to get to your question? There is the open house opportunity after this, so if you have any questions, you can hear, but you know, we will have an opportunity to uh, answer questions to uh, some of our engineers, and then you know, we can email address the first year, so we'll be able to get to the questions and all of this Uh, she has two questions. One, are we only considering Alstom as far as the deliveries? And no, the answer to that is no. Um, but Alstom being the major player in town, they obviously are a key and uh, key resource for us. We have been working with the wind turbine companies this year on their deliveries for a lot of the large deliveries in Greenwood. Um, so we do have a pretty good feel for the equipment and the materials they're delivering with now. And again, that will be all part of our package of reviewing the roundabout designs or any intersection turning designs. Um, our obligation, um, not every intersection in the project limits will be designed to allow all some vehicles to, to turn, nor would it be for windmills to turn. So again, we, we design the intersections for the usage. So again, that's the things that we'll look at as far as that. Um, the second question she asked is about the uh, pedestrian crossings of the corridor. And, and have we looked at the ability to uh, build a pedestrian bridge for better safety? And we do have one uh, underground crossing on the corridor right now. That's at Canadia Creek. Um, so again, we do have that. And then we have the pedestrian bridge crossing Canadia Creek on the west side. So those two exist today. Um, the challenge with pedestrian bridge and things like that today are the ADA requirements that go associated with it. And to get 15, 16, 17 feet over the road, the ramp becomes so long, it becomes very the public would rather not walk over a 400 foot long ramp when they just cross at grade. So yes, they, they can be safer if you use them, um, but the problem is most of the time people will avoid them because it's easier to just walk, walk across the intersection. But again, it's obviously something we'll look at as for the right location, um, especially the creek crossings. Uh, you may see some uh, cross special pedestrian only bridge crossings for that. So. Let me try to get this side of the room here. Um, you said you were looking at the intersection of what's crossing. Have you also been looking into the on off ramp from 86? Because I know when your 86 East comes on to uh, 36, there, there's a yield which no one yields. So there's definitely a problem there. Are you going as far as that too? Yeah, we are, we are looking at uh, all, all eight of those ramp points, uh, four exits and four ent um, entrances. And again, that is, uh, as we lay out and do the design there, it's something we'll be looking at is how to improve those. Um, do we, one of the concepts is do we eliminate the cloverleaf design to go more to a, what we call a split diamond design? So again, we'll be looking at those as well. So um, the other thing we're looking at is, as part of that project is right now, Route 36 under I-86 is a, is a 
is not maximum height that we desire. So again, we've had that bridge hit several times. We're going to look at the ability to maybe lower the road there to prevent the bridges from being hit. So that'll be part of our designs as well. But we'll keep going on questions and answers. I mean, I don't mind. <coughs> yeah, that's fine. I'm good. Yeah, I'm good. <coughs> Uh, I believe the census data, census data provides that information for us in addition to the fact that we have uh, well-worn signs of pass and, and usage within the community. So, I mean, obviously uh, anyone who's driven from Walmart into the city you can see the well-worn path of the pedestrians there. And the, uh, when the road was built in the 1970s, pedestrians walking out there wasn't even a, a consideration. So that's what we need to look at today. Because uh, I'll oversimpl oversimplify. If we're going to spend 40 to 50 million dollars in this quarter, let's not put back what may not be right. So that's kind of why we're here tonight. We want to do the right thing for 2020, not the right thing for 1970. So that's why we're here listening to make sure we do what the community wants. Um, the second question is, uh, do you think the DOT engineers think that two lanes uh, are safer than four lanes? There, there are, it's a different driving um, style. And again, I'll say we, we do have um, different accident rates based on the category of the road. And again, just because, and again, I'll, I'll use the example as this. Um, at the interstate, we may reduce those to two lanes, but they may be, uh, may be one lane on each side of the pier. So they may not be side by side. They may be wider, wider median, a raised um, uh, striped median. So again, we're looking at various, various layouts to uh, minimize the accidents. the traffic and, and the growth of the community and we've added a 1% traffic growth every year and we project it out to 25 years from now and the studies show that the um, traffic volumes are very very good along the project corridor and that uh, it was originally overbuilt as a four-lane facility and that's kind of the kind of what we have today it's an overbuilt corridor um, and reducing a two-lane offers that opportunity for us to do things on the southbound lanes for multimodal, um, recreational trails, things like that to, to enhance the corridor, better improve the gateway entering the city. Um, it's not really the most attractive gateway entering the city. Um, so. Thank you. Yep. We, uh, the roundabouts we designed will be designed for buses as well as tractor trailers and uh, in this situation you also some large vehicle deliveries. Uh, we have two, inter two roundabouts on the Route 13 corridor down Horseheads that have very similar traffic volumes and uh, it works very effectively, very efficiently down there. So again, 13,000 vehicles on, on this corridor with roundabouts is not a, a problem. Hi, Alicia. Yeah. 
intersection options at uh, Webb's Crossing. We're looking at all options there. Um, for those of you who, who were around then, the original design for Webb's Crossing was an elevated bridge. And during the construction phase, that bridge was taken out and it was made an accurate intersection. And the reason it was done at that point was because of the business impacts um, to, the, to the local businesses, because you couldn't get access from Route 36 to Webb's Crossing uh, without building a full interchange, which would have impacted the businesses they were trying to serve. So again, back in the back in the '70s, the the impacts of building that over, overpass would have hurt the businesses just like it would today. I mean, if you go up in the air, you're not going to be able to have access to those streets without cutting into all four quadrants of the businesses, and so that's a significant impact to the business, of which we would want to avoid. Um, have we looked at uh, um, the impacts of Seneca Road? Um, we have uh, all of our studies are are, are looking at that. Um, one of the things I'll say as a as a Local resident, I use Seneca Road because at certain times of the day I think it's faster than going the other way. Other times, I, I mean, I may be at the Italian Villa and want to go to Aldi's. I may go one way one second and a different way the next time. 
So again, I think everyone takes their shortest path that they think at that time of the day. Whether they're right or wrong, they feel good about it. And I think that will continue to happen. Um, if you're at Lowe's, do you go in through the, the village or not? I think everyone has their own opinion. And again, we can, we can show and we can document how much faster it'll be to go this way versus that way. But people have this perception of, I, my way's fastest. And you're not going to change that opinion. And you never will. But again, so we have to explain to them what the changes will be and how it may or may not affect them. As far as the bus garage, again, we'll go back and work with the school district because that's something that can fit in their master plan. Um, it's nothing, it's, we're not saying it's prohibited at this point, but it's a good suggestion that maybe we can help the, uh, the village and the school district as part of the project. So again, that's a great comment, and that's what we're looking to hear tonight. Who's next? Hello, Mike. Yes. Wayne Wilson here, also known as Max. A question, or actually uh, more of a thought on the two of uh, it, it seems, just seeing your opinion, about 13,000 people that use the highway to bring it down to the two-lane highway to make it safe and convenient for the walking and bicycling. Uh, the very honesty is only going to be able to use it probably nine months out of the year. But you're going to inconvenience motor vehicle traffic 24-7, uh, 365. That. Well, I, I, I get. Well, I'm not doing it. Right. You own right away on both sides of that. Is there something that can be done other than shutting down, reducing two, four lane to the two lane? The other thing to consider is uh, one, of the, one of the conveniences of the four lane, obviously, is when that, you know, I get out there and do 35 and people want to go 55. They have a means to go around. Road rage is limited. You're going to go to Tulane, very honestly, road rage is probably going to go up. Just my thoughts. Okay. Don't think that's uh, been thought of. Uh, next thing, I must have missed it. The pedestrian traffic along the uh, Maple City Drive or whatever, I must have missed some of that. How, how is that going to be done? Is that going to happen? We're, we're, Shrink the lanes or whatever. We, we have a lot of green space on both sides of uh, Maple City Drive in the, in the city within the right-of-way fences, the, the black fences. So again, we, uh, we, we can fit the new sidewalks or a multi-use trail within the existing right-of-way. We may shift the alignment two feet to gain a little space. But again, we, we are very confident that we can improve the north-south pedestrian movements within the city along Maple City Drive. As far as the speed and the number of lanes again if you post a two lane a four lane road at 45 miles an hour and you post a two lane road at 45 miles an hour the time difference is minuscule so it's really the the time to get from point a to point b is is based on your speed limits not necessarily the lanes because if we build the six lane section doesn't mean you're going to get there any faster than the four lane section so the number of lanes is tied to the operation and the capacity and number of vehicles not necessarily the and uh, the speed limit that goes with it so I, obviously, I mean, you have the same issue, um, someone doing uh, blow speed on it, yes. Provided both, both lanes aren't driving 35. I mean, I... That's true, too. Right. So. Hi, Eric. So, yeah. So, well, yeah, the, I'm going to repeat back, make sure I heard it right. 
The use of the bridges would help the pedestrian movements along the corridor. Yeah. Okay. The, the pedestrian bridge that we're talking about here would be to cross Route 36. You're still walking a mile parallel to Route 36 to get to that pedestrian bridge to cross. So the... Oh, I, I'm not, I 100% agree with you, it can be done. And, and we'll look at that, but the, what's the, the question we have to ask and analyze is, is it convenient for the pedestrian to use the, the pedestrian bridge? If it's not convenient, no one's gonna go out of their way to use the pedestrian bridge. An example I'll use is down at the end of Broadway, um, the tunnel under the railroad tracks. How many people still use that? That was built early on. I mean, yes, it was built, when it was built, it was because the trains constantly blocked and you had to do it. But now the trains aren't there as often. How many people actually cross under the tracks in the tunnel versus just crossing at grade? So I, I think you'll find that people are going to take, especially children, will take the shortest route, or students. So again, these are the things that we have to factor in. If it's convenient, if it makes sense to put a pedestrian bridge in, it's something we would do. But again, we, it has to make sense. Oh, yeah, it, it, for the, what, the new bridge that we build over Canisteo River there, could uh, one of several options. It could be a, a, a four-lane single bridge with sidewalks on both sides. It could be a four-lane bridge with a sidewalk on one side, a multi-use trail on another. It could be a four-lane bridge with two independent uh, sidewalk bridge on one side, multi-use trail on the other. It might be two separate bridges like it is today. The options for crossing that river is probably eight deep at this point. So again. We'll look at them all because, again, we want to build the right thing at the right cost for the, for the, the public to use. So, again, there's a lot of ideas. Um, let, me do, let me do this um, real quick thing. Um, for those of you, it's getting towards 7 o'clock. You may have other things to do tonight. We have people who want to do one-on-one -on -one questions in the cafeteria. I won't be insulted if you leave me. I'll stay here and do questions for another probably 25 minutes till 7.15. At that point, I'll play the presentation again for those who may have missed it. But again, that's kind of the, uh, the agenda and the itinerary. Does that work for everyone? Am I, I, but I don't want to feel like I'm rushing you either. So. Yeah. So yeah, to, to get to the open house, you go out of the, out of the auditorium, turn right, and the cafeteria uh, is on the right.
with the awesome our, our, our industry in town here, it's, it appears that it's going to be bigger and better with that traffic on a roundabout. That's a lot of, I, I've been to roundabouts, they're kind of small and tight. So I mentioned over there the, uh, you know, uh, hidden curves. I can't imagine bringing these cars through there and the buses and the tractor trailers. Well, a couple of things. One, these won't be traffic circles. So again, for those of you from the, from the, the Northeast and uh, New England states, they won't be traffic circles and they won't be mini roundabouts. These, these roundabouts will probably be in the neighborhood of 60 to 70 foot radiuses um, with, with lanes um, within them that will, the vehicles and trucks will, will use. Um, it, it, when we design these, we do expect trucks to, to travel over the, 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 what we call the roundabout aprons. So again, they'll be designed for those considerations. Um, as far as the chicken and the egg, was the roundabout decided so then we needed two lanes? No, it was not, it was not. It was, it, we're looking at the entire corridor as a whole. And again, to the point where we actually analyze in full detail whether or not we could reduce the number of lanes in the city with the long range plan of if we can go to two lanes in the city, 20 years from now, should we be extending the two lane section all the way to Castillo? I mean, just, so again, we've taken a, a high level look at this. And again, we found that the traffic volumes between the plaza and within the city cannot support that type of lane reduction. So again, that, that's been dismissed as part of uh, that analysis. So again, we're looking at it, everything as a menu. We'll pick one, we may pick some from here and some from here. And it'll be very, and as we go forward, we'll pick the right matrix of solutions. So, and as far as uh, the roundabouts, they are, people have to learn how to use roundabouts. Again, when we built these in other communities, in the first couple of weeks, there were some people who didn't understand how to use them. Uh, we have a lot of extra VMS uh, variable message signing to try to educate the public. We do a public outreach with the local media to try to educate the public. Um, again, trying to get them familiar with how to drive in a roundabout. Who has the right of way, who doesn't? So again, we want to try to educate the drivers uh, with these if that's what we built. And the insurance in in industry has been huge on with this change as well, as far as promoting the use of roundabouts and how their drivers can um, operate within them. So again, they're in the same interest as we are, safety. Yes, sir. Hi, this is Amy Stone, the Mormon. Uh, I have a simple comment, possible question. Why are you trying to fix something that's not broken instead of just enhancing it? All right, uh, you're, you're talking about tearing something down and rebuilding it into something smaller and slower. Why not just enhance what we have already without reducing lanes? And if you have problems with speed, what do we have to offer? All right, I mean, you, you know, you're talking about speed limits. Put the police out there. You know, and, you know, you're talking about accidents and all that stuff because people speed at 60, 65 miles an hour and 45 miles an hour or something. Put a cap out every once in a while. Well, the community I, will get the message. Well, I, I will defend the police agencies. They do patrol the Thank corridor. Hornell City, Hornell City Police patrols Route uh, 36, the state police and the sheriff patrol route um, 36 outside the city. So again, they do do the enforcement, but the problem is, the challenge is, they're not there 24 seven. They have thousands of miles of road patrol and really doesn't become effective to do that. As far as, and maybe I'll come out of this right here in this meeting. If the groundswell of the community is says, don't do anything, just rebuild what you got, that's what we should do. And what we're here to, what we're here to hear is, is that what we? Is that what the community wants? And again, there's ideas, concepts, but again, if we if the community comes back and says, "Don't change a thing," ignore the pedestrians, don't don't service the plaza for pedestrians, don't do this. I mean, that's that's where we can end up, but that's not the. We don't believe that's the right long-term solution for the community, and that's why we're here. Is to hear. I mean, 
if, if the groundswell says that don't change a thing, that's the message we need to hear because we don't think that's the right message. I'll be honest, we don't think that's the right message. We, we do not feel comfortable putting a sidewalk next to a 55 mile an hour highway for the safety. Move it over. I mean, so the, 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 the use of, of high speed facilities and trails, there's not enough corridor width to do all of that. So again, there, you could, there's not enough width to put the bike and pedestrian trail 10, 20 feet away from the from the lane because an errant vehicle will hit could hit a pedestrian. We we have wide medians out there because cars leave leave the roadway for safety. And if there's pedestrians and bike trails there, that's not good for them. And the and the the severity of how far people leave the road is directly proportional to the speed they're going. If they're going 45 miles an hour, they're only going to go so far off the road. If they're going 55, they're going to go further off the road. So the, the speed is tied to the setbacks of, of how close the pedestrian trail can be to the roadway, what type of roadway it is, is it a boulevard, is it a high speed corridor. Again, all these things factor into the correct design and what we propose for the community. And again, where we're coming back in the next meeting is, we heard this, this is what we think the alternatives that you wanted to study are. And we'll come back with, with all these ideas. One of the alternatives we'll look at is build exactly what we have. But again, we will have a list of pros and cons to that, in addition to the pros and cons of the other alternatives. This is more of a comment than it is a question, but um, I'm going to visit somewhere on 336. Um, North Carolina Court Artwork. Taking a four-lane into a two-lane there is, is I own motorcycle business. I watch everyday motorcycles. There's no turn lane. There's a lane to pass. And in a car, I have to get over on the shoulder purposely to see if people are going to get in the left hand lane to pass. I don't know how many times I'm up to the right there. Um, unification services absolutely is needed. Uh, there, the DOT has allowed shoe manufacturers to grow up. Um, I mean, I offer this business owner to top and down. So What we, uh, I, I, I understand your comment, not reducing it, but I will offer this as a, a comment in, to the audience. When the county closed off County Route 66 two years ago, and we put the temporary traffic signal up at Industrial Park, we did reduce the traffic down to a single lane. We heard a lot of people say, why can't you make that permanent? Because the traffic signal left turn lane. So again, that's... No, I said that was a traffic light there. We did not say that. Well, I agree. Ten years, you know, in the making, it was supposed to be an industrial park, and then it was, it was not there. Right. So now you've got more traffic going on industrial park road, trying to cross over that. I just, just today, it was just tiny. I watched five cars not know what to do in that intersection. And, and okay, they need to reduce the speed. I'm not opposed to that, but I am opposed to taking something from four lanes into two lanes when it's already made. Especially for a person. That is my business. I was whining, I live on Thatcher Street. Our concern is what you're doing at the down the end of Thatcher Street extension with Austin. We've been told that possibly they'll be taking our trees. Um, no parking on Thatcher. It is a residential street, and they'll be using the Thatcher Street Bridge to transport these fast track trains coming in and out of that facility. And we complained enough now that they're using the access street, but are you, with what you want to 
propose, will this alleviate us worrying about 18 wheelers going up and down our street? And you know, you talk about safety. What's safe about an 18 wheeler going down a residential street with sidewalks that, you know, it's less than three feet away from the street? Besides the fact that all of our manual covers are sunken from um, you know, the businesses that we already have. We, we watch buses going up and down. We have watched, now we have Lippincott using their heavy, um, so they're using that street instead of using Kansas Street or instead of using 36 because of the street lights, I agree, or of the traffic lights, I agree. With that. <coughs> but there's so much. Our sidewalks are a mess, our city streets are a mess, and now you're going to put all this money in. To, this, to do this project and there's so much, there's so much to be done in this town. You ruined it, you ruined it 50 years ago. Sounds like you want to keep doing it. Well, I will say, one of the things that we mentioned in our presentation, I'll repeat it here as well, is if there's improvements we can make to move some of the vehicles off of the city streets, such as opening up Broadway and freeing up Allen Street by the school, that's the things we're looking at as far as, as options. But again, until we fully appreciate Alston's operations and um, Stern's operations, again. Stern's was always that, that intersection at Gaston and 36 was always designed, it was designed initially for Stern's so that they could change that to accommodate Stern's. But it's important for us to understand how they operate today versus how they operated in 1970. Well, and that's part of. And, but, we're, we're looking at all the turn movements for the industrial areas of Hornell. So again, the, the vehicles that are in Shawmont Park, where do they go? Vehicles that are at, um, um, down at the awesome facilities, do they always use Al Allen Street? Do they use the, the road, um, Elm, do they access off of Elm Street? Again, we want to understand, we need to understand to make the right solutions where they move and is there op opportunities for us to improve that for the entire community. Because if we can take tractor trailers off of a, a city street and get them on, our, our, on Route 36 arterial, that's a win, I think, for the entire community. I'm sorry, is it a res it's, it's is it a, a residential bridge or is it a commercial bridge, Thatcher Street Bridge? The Thatcher Street Bridge is a, is a bridge that handles all traffic. I mean, if there's industry down there, it's a, it's, it was built by the Department of Transportation. No limit, it can handle they, they can handle everything at this point. We have, uh, that, that, lo that bridge is not posted. Um, so again, that is a, a viable access point for the industry on Thatcher Street um, and the residents on Thatcher Street to access uh, Main Street, in addition to accessing uh, Route our 36. Street, our street, our um, Dexter Street, you should ask how many residents can um, replace their sewer lines uh, going to the city sewer lines. Or well, yeah, and that, that's part of the uh, analysis is if we can change traffic patterns as part of our project. Our project will not rebuild Thatcher Street. So again, if that's the wish, that that's not no, part of not, right. That's not that, that that will not be something I can offer. We do not want that right. street rebuild. Right. We just want the mm -hmm. right. And that's what we'll look at as opportunities to do that. Joe, next. Hi.
I got it by some. We have, we have about another five minutes. Like, I, and I'm not being insensitive here, and I'm not trying to be. We've heard the message. You're not a fan of the four lane to two lane. We've heard the message about the roundabouts. Is there other things that we should hear that those two don't apply to? Because again, other people want that. that then that's who I want. I want to hear the next round of comments. I'm uh, probably one of the youngest people here. I grew up in our court. That's a, that, that's a valid comment. We, we totally understand exactly what you're saying as far as the pedestrian crossings of all the roundabouts, whether it's the students or adults. So it's one of the things that we're looking at, and we are not looking at roundabouts at Adsit or State Street. So. Well, the, uh, the, the traffic volumes for, third, I mean, for the maintenance activities such as paving, again, those are short-term uh, work solution, work problems. And again, it's something that we do across a lot of roads in our state. North of Arcport on Route 36, we have high traffic volumes. We just paved that in the past two years. So again, you have to work through it. Maybe the use of night work because the traffic volumes are less. Um, you, part of that is uh, as part of the construction and long-term maintenance. 
As far as the maintenance of what we build in the median, I would love to be having that discussion at this point because that means we're much further along. But again, it's one of those that uh, we'll work with the city about um, their maintenance. Uh, they, they, they do a lot of the maintenance there. We want to make sure we build something that's easy for them to maintain and something that's not a lot of work for the taxpayers of the city as well as the, uh, the spend the money and not maintain it makes no sense. Um, as far as some of the improvements we're, we're discussing, such as the multi-use trail, obviously that's something that we're very good at building at and that we'd have to work closely with the communities to maintain it, whether it's, uh, if it's a, a sidewalk, who's going to plow the snow on the sidewalk. And typically communities turn that over to the local property owners. Um, so again, there may be some, uh, some things there that, uh, or the city may end up with some sort of uh, maintenance plan or the town or the, or the village. So again, there's a lot of maintenance discussions coming as we go forward with the, uh, with the uh, project. We, we have not defined the two-lane section for termination where yet. So again, the, the idea at this point is that we would extend it south out of Arcport. Would it go to Big Creek? Would it go to Webb's Crossing, Route 21? Um, that termini has not been determined. But really, there's not a lot of, once you're between Webb's Crossing and Big Creek, you have those t the, the one intersection there. That's really the only change in traffic pattern. So it doesn't make a lot of sense if you're going to carry it to, to one point and there's no traffic changes, why don't you carry it further? Once you get to Big Creek, we see a significant traffic change south of there. So obviously, we, we don't find any um, solid reason to extend the two-lane section south of Big Creek. But again, these are the things we're going to study. I mean, uh, how we can make it work, what, what will or won't work. There's a plan to put a, um, a turning lane where Yeah, we, we believe the, uh, the addition of a, of a turn lane into the Wegmans end of the plaza will greatly benefit us at the Walmart end of the plaza by taking, we're going to divert like 35% of the traffic up to that intersection. So again, that will make the two intersections, um, make the Bethesda Drive intersection much safer with less traffic. Whether it's a plane or a plane. Yeah. Okay, I'm sorry for my we do it every day, all winter. Our, our, our maintenance people, our maintenance people will do it. Oh, I, I, it's not easy to drive a snow plow, period. I will say it just like that. You're in the worst weather possible. You're in a big, large vehicle, snowing, rain, sleet. You have 14 levers. How much salt am I adding? What plow is up? What, what angle? Is the wing down? Is the wing forward? Snow plow is a very complicated process. Don't, I mean, and again, a roundabout is just one more complication as in addition to plowing an intersection that the. All right, another question. Uh, I've heard speak on a roundabout. I'll use snow levers, is that the right word? Mm hmm. I want to get in your car in your free time and work with more. Look at that mess. Okay? This is not maintained because work is high rather than that. Okay? I want to look at that tomorrow. I know exactly what you're talking about. I know exactly what you're talking about. I hopefully don't put something like that in the side of the road. Because the side of it, you just can't get it. You can't lower it. You just got to do it. I understand you've got to have a short break. You've got to think on the other side of the page. Like, yeah, that's one. I mean, we, we, we've been building roundabouts uh, for the past probably six, seven years. Every roundabout we make better because we learn from experienced people like you. How about two more questions? That's it, two. I already went long on my, my promise of 715. Again, we, we will all be in the cafeteria next. Um, so again, um, feel free to talk to us. Um, and again, we're, we want to hear what we're missing. So with that, two more questions. Hi, I'm Mary John Lucky. Um, you know, I, first of all, I want to thank DOT for hosting this. I think it's really wonderful that you've had this community engagement. Obviously, you know, it's, it's kind of a mixed bag. You know, certain components people like, certain components.
points uh, that uh, are of concern. I think one thing that's been kind of lost in the conversation is just the investment, uh, the investment alone, a multi-million dollar investment throughout the corridor, and, and just the service condition of the road uh, throughout the city. I know there was a, a light layover done on the northern end, uh, leaving the city, going into the village, but that, you know, that, that's more of a temporary fix. And just the investment on the road surface itself is very significant. Uh, you know, if I could start on the, the southern end and, and kind of work my way north, I think you know, some, of the, some of the good things in my mind are uh, you know, the possibility of the opportunity of opening up Broadway. Um, opening up Broadway from where the public safety building is gives the fire department direct access to 36 currently. They have to do uh, a loop around, uh, same with the police department. Uh, I think that would impact um, response time significantly, uh, especially with EMS. Uh, the, the crosswalk coming from Broadway to Cass Street has been a concern for a long time. I, I worked a couple years ago with Brian Kelly and, and some DOT folks, uh, you know, trying to you know, kind of get a grip on that. You know, the sight line coming off of Elm Street, you, you can't, you know, unless you're uh, you know, in a large truck and you can see over the fence, if you're in a regular car, you, you can't see around that. So I, I think there are some concerns there, and uh, you know, definitely open to uh, DOT's ideas how we can make that section safer. Um, the, the bike trail, the pedestrian trail, I, I think that is a, a good idea. And, and honestly, you know, it, there, there are a number of pedestrians, whether on foot, whether on bicycles, that do travel through the corridor heading to the plaza. I drive it all the time, I see it all the time. It's dangerous, I see them on the weekends, I see them in the mornings, I see them at night. There are employees that work at the plaza, there are customers of the plaza, you know, people that just don't have the means to get there otherwise. And I think, I think if we ignore that or if we minimize that, it's a, it's a mistake. It's an accident waiting to happen. Um, I, I know there's been some comments about you know, the foot trail and, and all that. That foot trail is there because people use it. That foot trail didn't just appear one day. And so I, I think that's an honorable thing to, to address. Um, you know, I'm not an engineer, so how, how you make all those parts fit, you know, that, that's a question that I know uh, the DOT has been studying and taken seriously. I, I think it's a wonderful idea on the northern end of the plaza to have access from either direction. Uh, that's, a, that's definitely a bonus. In regards to going from two lanes to four lanes, I would say that you know, the city and the community is growing. We have more traffic than ever before, um, not just commercial vehicles, but uh, you know, just regular folks. You know, people, people are moving to the area. We're growing and also is adding jobs uh, when the new uh, car shell manufacturing facility comes online. Uh, you know, they're estimating at least 250 jobs added. There'll be more traffic and more people coming to the community. Uh, but the plaza has, has grown exponentially over the years. Lowe's, Wegmans, Walmart, and, and all stores in between. We have a hotel that's being built now with opportunities for even more developments in, in that plaza. So, you know, I, I foresee the corridor, uh, you know, in Fort Allen, North Fort Allen, the town, I, I see you know, the activity only increasing over time. So, so again, it does give me pause to think about going from four lanes to two lanes. Uh, in, in regards to roundabouts, you know, a lot of people aren't crazy about roundabouts. I will say that the intersection of Simmons and Rockwell has a high, uh, you know, quite a history of accidents up there. You know, whether the answer to that is a roundabout or a reconfiguration of the, you know, the traffic lights, I, I don't know, but I, you know, I'm open-minded to at least listening and, and Seeing you know, what's the best fit. I'm not crazy about roundabouts, uh, you know, southern of that. I, I think you need the four lanes of traffic to accommodate, you know, not just the, the regular traffic, but the, you know, the large trucks that we've discussed, uh, obviously also. But also, and, you know, someone had mentioned you know, windows earlier, and, and you do see increased traffic in that regard, and, and those trucks are, are very long. Um, so, you know, there's a lot of things to consider, but, uh, but I, I do applaud you for taking the time, for taking the fire. I used to stand up there and take a deep so.
a, a wonderful community engagement, and, and, and I do applaud DOT for really taking the time. Um, you know, I was just a kid 50 years ago, and uh, you know, the, the four lane was being built. I, I actually, I'm showing my age here, but I do have vague memories of the <laughs> park before uh, it was ripped up. Um, but I, I, I don't know that this sort of thing happened then, but I think it's wonderful for the community to have input, and thank you again. Thank you, Mayor. Last question. Who has it? Who's the lucky one? What happens to the veterans monument? We walked up the end of Broadway. We uh, actually, we're, we're, the veteran monument over on Broadway Mall would not be changed. So we'd be, we're, we're, the, where, we're, where we're talking is opening access from the police station to Route 36. So you would have access coming out of the police station to go <coughs> north or south out of 36. So that's the movement that we're talking about. We're not talking about changing Broadway Mall. Just so clarifying that answer. Yes, sir. Just real quick, so are you going to have any kind of um, website or, or uh, email or something where they can contact you for further advice? You, you, you were the perfect segue, and I didn't even pay you for that question. I, everyone got a brochure here. We have a, a website. We have a, an email address. Again, we have a project-specific website. Um, We'll keep posting. We'll present the uh, presentation we have tonight. The, we did here. We'll have a list of questions and answers that we've heard tonight. Not every person, but just a block of questions about roundabouts. And here's the questions and answers and four lanes to two lanes. Um, so again, we're going to give back to the community what we heard tonight. And the important part is this is not in a vacuum. We don't want to. We want to tell you exactly what we hear, and we're not going to try to um, downplay your concerns. So thank you. That was a great segue. There's an email address for comments. There's a box out there for put written comments down as well. So thank you. I'll start the presentation again for those who want to watch it a second time. And uh, I'll look forward to seeing you in the uh, cafeteria. Yes. Do you want me to call in 8.30 tomorrow, or is that just the beginning of when your show starts? That's when the show starts. Okay. You know what I was thinking what I could do for questions? Okay. Uh, I would say leather stitches. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. No. It looks no, one, no, no one gets them for stretch, so. Um, I was thinking I could play the audience questions. Because I was already playing the audience questions. Sure. Play them back in it, and, and have you answer them when you come back. All of them? No. Huh? No, just I'll go through and get the ones that, like, I can hear. Um... Is it, is, are you, I, it's not that I'm opposed, but like, so I don't want to. They're already, they we're already in. So. Sure, sure. It's just okay. Well, but if, but our audience wouldn't have. A lot of our audience wouldn't have heard it. I'm not trying to be argumentative. Not like you're fine. You're fine. Just, they ask better questions than I could have come up with this. What I'm trying to say. So like, I, if I play, I'm, you know, I'm not going to fan what you, but just the thing I was Well, yeah. This, this is one thing I want to, you know, make sure is clear that. Recording? Not intentionally. I, I, I can stop. No, I just didn't think, you know, if we're on the record. No, no, no. I wasn't taking you intentionally. I, I, I think the other one's still No, I just want to, you know. Yeah. Um, you know, just want to. It's, it's not that we're unwilling to answer this question. Mike, Mike's the engineer's person. Sure. Well, thanks so much. That's great. But, you know, as far as. It's important to remember that this is just. Step. Sure, sure, sure. Process. So, you know, I, it would not behoove the audience for me to try and answer. So if you just run back some of the questions that were asked here and then have me try to answer. Sure. That wouldn't, that wouldn't work out well. Uh, okay. Because I'm not an engineer. Uh, would, I, would it be better, would, would, should I have Mike here? Call into the radio station? Sure, no, I think that's what we need to do. Okay. Yeah. Great. What I was saying to him is I could play back some of the questions that were asked and have you answer them. WLEA? Yes. Okay. And, you know, I, I thought I could run up on Ashbox. Yeah. Studio. That's fine. I mean, it's okay with you. I don't mind. I don't mind. Yeah. Cool. That's great. That's um, great. Um, I'm going to have to uh, call in next week. Or you oh, I'm just going to do tomorrow. How are you doing? Tomorrow. Tomorrow, uh, you know, uh, 8 30. Is that possible? Sure. I'm happy to, I'm happy to be available to call in, recap, uh, 
the event. I mean, I could call sure. five here. I could call him at nine. But I could go first. Could you call him 30 or no? That's a good answer. Yeah, we can do that. Yeah, 3 4 is the number. Thank you. I play back. How long? It's like 25 minutes, so you go to about 5 and 9. It's like 8.34 to 5 and 9. So it's about 23 minutes. 24 minutes. The goal at the top is to that to like 15. Do you, want me, do you want to just go one segment? That'd be great. Yeah. Can you do this with a single segment? Sure. Great.